Okay. And this is my starting deck. That's they, your starting deck. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oops. Learning how to play Echelon over at Archon Games. The joy of the reset. Not quite like video games, a little harder. <laughs> oh, boy. <it's> anyways. <laughs> Could you throw these in these piles over here? So these will go right there. And then those will go by you over there. Uh, just into that. Yeah, I'm just mashing them up. Sorry. There you go. Some of these guys can go. This guy can go home. These two can go home. And then if you throw those guys. All right, almost there. Are we deck building? I feel like yep, we're about so to be deck, deck building. Deck building meets uh, board strategy. Okay. All right, so welcome to Eschaton. The end is nigh, the Dark One returns with the fighters of the Aether to cleanse the realm of lesser cults. You as cult leaders will be raising cults trying to earn his favor so that one of you can ascend to be his chosen to serve beside him in the throes of eternity. Uh, through deck building, you'll be building a deck of cards representing your individual cults, and you'll be using those cults to wage war in the realm, delve into the arcane for magic items to empower your cause, while this global narrative event deck weaves the story of our journey to the end. Every round, new events will change the gameplay, reveal quests to strive for, finally taking us to Armageddon. Upon the revelation of Armageddon, everyone dies, the world burns, and the players earn the most shall ascend as the Dark One's chosen. So um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to shuffle these seven cards that I've given you. That's your starting deck. From those seven cards, go ahead and draw a hand of five. Are all uh, decks the same for starting? Yep, everybody starts on the same footing, and you're going to make choices to build this deck to your liking. So um, you have the round marker in front of you, this, this hefty token, indicating that the dark one leans in your favor. So you're going to be teaching us how to play. You're going to play all five of cards from your hand to start the round. All right. So when your turn comes around, you're just going to drop all five cards. Oh, and one more thing. As you begin, everybody take four of your cubes and place them right here in the Citadel. Do you want to... Cubes. Citadel. There you go. Okay, thank you. All right, so that just represents your population in the mouth. Now, uh, so go ahead and play your five cards. All right, so I got it, three fanatics, an acolyte, and an initiate. And if you guys want to follow along with me, there's a, an attribute list on the back. I'm going to go ahead and explain what these attributes do. So every turn is playing five cards, resolving four attributes. Pretty simple. It's how you build the, the stack of the attributes that makes it complex. So the first attribute you see is the chain with the chain link is your cultist zeal. That's the fervor for the dark cause of your cultist and enables you to play more than five cards on a turn. So if you have any number there, you'll be able to draw more cards from your deck and play more than five cards. That's a stat you're going to have to build into. We're not handing that off. You're going to have to make your cults have some zeal and fervor for their cause, so you'll have to work for that. Uh, second attribute you have is divination. Divination gets you access to the arcana deck. This is full of special characters magic items and spells that empower your deck's abilities as we play. So what do you have a total? My Acolyte has two. <laughs> so you look at the top two, you reveal them to everybody, it's just since we're learning Succubus here. Succubus and Scour Relic. So you have a choice between a special character and a treasure that's worth points at the end. So you see that the, yeah. that relic is worth one point and can be stacked for an attribute bonus, which is a little harder to pull off in a short demo, so I might recommend going with the character. So yeah, you keep one and you discard yep, the other. Yep, so the one you discard goes face down under here. And then the one you keep goes face up in your discard pile. Okay. So the discard pile will eventually become your deck as yeah, you yeah. get more cards. Yep. Great. So next you have your influence. Influence is your power to initiate uh, characters from the conclave over there. So based on your total for the turn, you can make any number of initiations based on the cost in the upper right hand corner. So if you had six points, you could buy a three, a two, and a one. Right. You could buy a six. But with one, obviously, you're building right now. You gotta so I get... can only get another initiate. Yep. But getting influence early on is a really good thing. So, perfect. Uh, finally, aggression. we get to aggression. That's how we control our forces on the board state. So based on your total, you have three actions. You have bolstering, advancing, and slaughtering. 
Bolstering is adding cubes to territories in which you have a presence. Advancing is moving to adjacent territories. And then slaughtering is killing enemies if you occupy a territory together. So you have six points to spend. Well, I'm going to slaughter make everybody else weaker For sure, right yeah, now. slow them down. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Guys, Wait. my tiny cube mans. <laughs> Can you split your uh Yes, so, you, you could, so at six points, say you could add two, move three, gotcha. kill one if you wanted. Okay. You could just add six. So anything across the three axis, as long as you do them in the order that's listed there. So if we sure. all slaughter everyone in there? That's what I'm going for. Yeah, so is, it, is it over because we can only add no. cubes to territories where we're the present? Cit <laughs> the Citadel is a thriving den of evil. There are always denizens eager to draw, join right. your dark cause, so, but a whisper of your intentions will have your cult going in. So you can always use aggression to respawn in the Citadel. So you can always start in the Citadel. Everywhere else you have to have units. Yep, everywhere else you have to work for. That I broke the game already. I was so close. <laughs> well, that's what I was going for. I was going for a TP. It you just wipe out everybody now. else. And yeah. It's like the dark gun shows up and there's no one really remaining. <laughs> so uh, having resolved all your cards, they go to your discard like you've done. That's going to stay with you because oh. that's going to move at the end of the round got to it. indicate first player. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and play your five cards. Awesome. I got my five. I have no uh, zeal. No zeal. Uh, I two have divination. two divinations. So I get to draw two, discard one. So you have a choice between two special characters. This one looks more better. So Seems objectively that. better. Yep, so you go face up and you uh, discard. discard. sorry. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody's supposed to see the... Yeah, you can show them just so people can see what's going on. See what lurks ahead in there. Uh, I have three influence, and so I will entirely arbitrarily buy... So we've got some... Uh, uh, there's get you choices all the way up to this. So we have a three divinating. That's yeah. an ox player that I'll explain in a little bit. Okay. Uh, we have two influence, a little utility guy. There's some anomalies, like that's the only character you can buy with point fixing, because it's the only one that has a point value in the bottom right. Okay. Um, this one stacks with some of the other cards, and I'll explain that on the second turn, so you just... Okay, I will keep it nice and simple and buy a zeal. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Very good utility. Uh, that was influence. Yep. That was influence? Yes, and then, so, and then I have two aggression, which I will try and restock <laughs> before someone uh, purchases... Uh, well, I don't know. No, let, let me let me just, just change the game the a little bit. Let's so move. What we're doing on the map is ultimately these all have point values at the end. So each territory is a different end game worth. And some of these have in-game stat bonuses. So if you have the most cubes in one of these territories, you get the corresponding stat bonus as long as you have the dominant population. Okay. Certain omens from here may also call for domination of territories on a turn. So they're heavy point value victory conditions. So letting the board totally slip is kind of a risky move. Okay. And what is this, uh, like the plus one? So is if, that a setup? Yep, so if you, if you oh, move okay. here, you have the most cubes, you just get this ability, getting you plus one aggression on your next turn. Okay. I mean, as well do that. I got I got two points. Let's let's Sweet. move and Sounds do things. Good. Okay. And then those cool. cards go to discard. Yep. We pass to you. All right. So I go ahead and play out my hand here. We have three initiates. Let's see, but we're gonna start with the acolyte, I guess, because he has first one. So he's gonna do divination. Yep. So you take top two cards. Top two cards from right here. Uh, so you have a choice between, he has a choice between an edict, which is a spell that resolves every time it comes into play, and then a treasure that's worth two points at the end of the game. Okay, so it's just, so I have victory points over here, and that's the little number in the corner. And I have, what do you just do? Uh, this is pussy. So I could play this, and then move well, to... Well, this will go to your discard pile. Okay, so I'll And I'll then when it, next time it comes okay. up, you get to resolve sure. it every time. So In interactivity over pure victory points, which is probably the wrong strategy, but it's the one we're going to go early with. Early on, it's great. Yeah, I feel like it's good good for round one. All right. So that's my Acolyte resolve. Then my three Initiates resolve. So I have three Influence. And... So who can I get for three? Let's get somebody weird. What are my three options? Seer? Can I get multiple cards for a total if, of three? If you can afford them, yep. All right, that is just a whole lot of that. So uh, if you want to know, the Disciple, if you want to take a look at this guy, they have yeah. zero for their own attributes, but they have Scour. Scour lets you keep more when you divinate. So if you have, uh, say, seven divinate, 
two scour, you get to look at the top seven, keep one as a base, and then one for each point of scour. So you get to keep three of the seven okay. cards. Okay, and then uh, they inspire, also have Inspire? Inspire is an influence-based movement, meaning it happens on the third phase. So when you come to aggression, you can now add here or move a second time. So it's a tactical movement happening happening in the third phase rather than the fourth. Alright, sure. Let's let's go weird. I'm gonna get the get the okay. disciple, interact with weird stuff. And then you have uh, then I have some aggression. Some aggression. I think uh, I think we're going to move let's see I can move two cubes. We're gonna move out. Sounds good. Yep. Great. All your cards are concluded. Twice pass the turn on over here. Okay. So that was the plan. So I've got three points. I'm gonna go ahead and go for uh, I lost my I lost my thing here. I'm gonna go for the acolyte and initiate. Cool. So I put them. So they go face up this card, yep. Uh, and then I got two fanatics. Uh, so I can draft two cubes with two points, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. so you have a total of four. So I have a total of four, so two. I can draft two. Yep. And then movement is the number of points I have, I can move that many Yep, so you have two else. points left to move guys out. All right, uh, I will try moving here. Sounds good, all right. Perfect, so that's your turn. Uh, for, for the movement, can you move one cube that many spaces? No, they're only mortal, so they can only cover so much ground. Okay. That's where that march or that inspire comes in, because that's one with that. That's really putting your guys okay. to the grind. The big brain stress. And then if you get an edict, you can also use that, then do that, then do that. So there's a way to get up to three. Where do I place my... Uh, so face up in your discard. Okay. And then, uh, so relics, you'll see we have a sacrificial uh, player here. Yeah. That's the calling dynamic. So on your turn, rather than resolving a card's attributes, you can choose to sacrifice them. That's how you get those like starting cards out of your deck and get to the more of the better ones more often. And that's a free action as long as you don't use stats. Three for a zealot, two for my fanatic, move one, mark one. Yep. So now since in this game, anytime there's a tie, it's resolved as a total loss. So because no one has it right now, it goes back to the board. And that, that that's true for the end game as well. If you all tie, no one has risen above, so you all burn in the fires of Armageddon. Sweet. That sounds fair. Sweet. So you've done a full revolution. First thing you do is pass that. Now flip over an event card and read what happens on this round. So do we shuffle back up our cards yet or not? Uh, just one second. Do you want to read it? Some of these sure. may affect uh, okay. your discard pile. So. All right, so we have a Dark Fervor event. At the beginning of this round, each player draws two additional cards. So, we'll so we stacked the demo for you. In the full game, there's 23 events and 13 omens. You only use eight events and three omens in a game. We've chosen fun, friendly events. Sometimes they're awful and will screw you all over. This one says seven cards. So go ahead, draw the last two from your deck, yep. set those aside, then shuffle your discard and draw five more to get to seven. And that's just to ensure that no cards get stuck in a purgatory of a bad shuffle. And then whenever you're ready, you get to take the turn, first turn. Alright, so seven cards out? Yep. Alright. So, we open with a zealot, which gives us fervor, which allows me to draw another yep. card. and you get two more from her. Oh, and two more. Yes, so you get to play everything on this card. Okay, alright. That's Power exciting. Play. Okay. Uh, divination, I have two, three, four. Uh, and so you said there was one of the characters yep. that... Disciple. Of the disciple would have allowed you to retain more. Okay. So, Sacred Relic, that's points. Military Advisor. Uh, you can march two cubes per turn. That's interesting. A Geist. And then uh, Inspire. So, can you remind me what Inspire was? Inspire is the influence-based movement. Yeah. So that allows you to move before you get to aggression. Uh, okay. I'm going to retain the Manticore. Nice. Which looks Fine exciting. Position. Thank you. Uh, all right. Influence. That is one, two, three, four, five. Um, okay. So if my goal is to figure out mechanisms for purging. Yeah. What should I be looking for? So you want to get rid of guys? Yeah. That's a free action oh, as long is? as you don't use their stats. Oh, interesting. Okay, well I won't worry about that at the moment then. Um, I'm feeling me, super like, wealthy. Yeah, completely. so it, it distills your deck down to I know, I feel like I should getting, get one of the expenses. Because so, I don't know what they do yet. <laughs> yeah, getting right. zeal is never a bad choice. That's okay. always good. Uh, okay, so I bought that. And then my last one, two, three, four, five, six. So, um, 
So this may be a point to think about some sacrificing because yep. you know you just bought this and you have that. Oh yeah. So okay. seeing this guy that's just just a two aggression, you may want to take a less oh, lesser swing this Good turn point. to get to those better cards more frequently. Interesting. Okay. All right. Just to answer a question about sacrificing. No, let's give it a shot. I mean, we're here to learn. So I'm gonna do that. So that brings me down to four, and uh, I'm gonna reinforce. Uh, the Great Road. Yep, so you take that back. Okay. Perfect. So that's your turn. Thank you. Pass it over to you. All right, so we've got a lot going on. I've got my Edict, such fanaticism, initiates, and my Acolytes. So, so and I do... So first resolves first. Okay. So this resolves first, so we're going to go ahead and jump over here. But it will... Yep. Yeah, that's how that works. And then I get this. So now technically, these are great because Edict's resolved before you start your turn in technicality. So since he sees this before his turn technically began, he will get this bonus on this turn. Ah, oh, that's even better. So I'm gonna, oh, so influential. All right, then the Acolyte goes and does Acolyte business. Oh, wow, we're gonna, that, she seems great. Yeah, welcome to the team, Wraith. And I do get to activate all seven of yep. them, or? Okay. Three initiates. Let's, uh, then I have plus one from the old city, so now I've got four. So let's take a look at the fours. See, so we have the Magus. And the Herald. That's just gratuitous recruitment. Rotter. And, oh, and the Templar's five. So we'll go ahead and go with the Marauder. That's what I'm gonna do next turn. It's a more zeal accessibility. That's these resolved, that's these resolved. Then the Fanatics, we're gonna go ahead and oh, use my own color cubes, not somebody else's. You could bolster his armies if you want. Go for it, man. What's so, the end game? So uh, ultimately this deck, when you make it in the bottom three cards, uh, we'll have an Armageddon card. Oh, when that Armageddon right. okay. card comes up, the game immediately ends. Okay. So you know, once the Somewhere cards, in the last three. Yeah, so it's like a 66% okay. chance and a 50% chance, and then if it's the last one, you got to kind of set up to get as many points as you can get. All right, and then, so if I use two of them to recruit, and then I could use the other two to, uh, to slaughter? Yep. All right, so... Uh, can I do one more and then slaughter once? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, let's, let's do that and then kill one of all of the remaining dudes in the space. Well, you, you only have four aggression, so you can only kill one cube. Oh, uh, one cube total? Yes. Okay, uh, well, let's do that. There's too many of those over there. I don't know. Alright, and that's me. Were you guys waiting on the demo? Yeah, yeah, cool. Sweet. Yeah, they are. There we go. Okay. Did you? Which one? I'm having to wrap up whenever. I mean, I'm, they're up for. I know the gist of the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see what we're doing. We can catch you up wherever. Cool. Do you mind if they jump in on that one and they refer you on one of these? Cool. Nice. Grab the ghoul. Uh, and then uh, with my with my initiates, I get three. I feel like this is where the cost of entry. I mean, apparently it doesn't come with the base game, though. Oh, you're oh, kidding. We, we have like a card stack over with the base. This is like an add-on on a Kickstarter, so we oh, sell those okay. separately. But yeah, we're happy with how this like... This alone is beautiful. Man. <laughs> Thank you. So. Yeah, Adam does 3D modeling, so he modeled it oh, okay. and like cast for him. So I have six of the aggression. Does that mean I can place up to six cubes? You can uh, add, move, or kill in total six. Yeah, okay. You can add six, though, if you want. Perfect. Boom. There you go. The Dark Forest is undoubtedly yours. The brutal swing back so that pops the, the token oh, yeah. back. The, the great battle of the great road. That's right. All right. All right. So, yeah, I'm just out here conquering Australia. <laughs> yeah, heading west. Very nice, quiet lands over here. Three to recruit. 
Uh, we do have another thing during the center table. So from a from a balance standpoint, you know, there's a, there's basically an operational benefit as well as six victory points. Yeah. That seems it's pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah. We What's see the... we see a lot of battles going on where a lot of the game just focuses here, but people slip off and take like the five and the four and the two. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So there's some weight intentionally to kind of dead end points. In okay. The to encourage some level of player interaction. Yep. What's the normal duration of play? Uh, because it's like a, uh, a de pretty dense strategy game. I don't think it's going. It's about two hours or so. Oh. Oh, we'll the table up because we got the gist of it. Okay. Night. Uh, yeah. Oh, my foot's stuck. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and call it. This is a great demo. Thanks for thanks for doing it. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for sitting down. Yeah. yeah no, man. It's a great demo. Is... So I'm assuming this was everything, right? So this is just the basic. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Okay. The expansion adds an asymmetrical element by adding, you choose one of eight cult leaders, and they each have a play style.